Hello folks, it's me again. One of the things that I enjoy doing in my spare time is hunting for old woodworking tools at garage sales or antique stores or flea markets, places like that. Uh, I know a lot of you enjoy doing this, so I thought I might try something a little different. Um, I was out this weekend actually doing some Christmas shopping and came home with a couple of goodies for myself. So I thought I'd just make a quick video to show you what I found. Uh, I always like to see what other people find when they're out hunting for tools, so I thought I'd just share with you some of the finds that I made. Let's take a look. The first thing I came across was this vise. This is a Versa vise. Uh, it was made by the Wilbert Company of, of Orville, Ohio. And uh, these vices are really, really kind of handy. Um, this one is missing the base. There's a a mount that you screw to the top of your workbench and it has a post on it and then you set the vise over the post and you can swivel it in any direction and then you can also remove it from the post and set it sideways. Sorry the cat's very curious here. You can set it sideways so that the jaws extend over the edge of your bench and you can clamp up uh, longer taller pieces of work. Um, they're just kind of a interesting design and um, Copies of these are still being made. I think they're being sold by Garrett Wade and a couple of other retailers. And then the one of the employees of the original uh, Wilbur Company actually bought the drawings for the original vices. And I think he's having the parts cast overseas and then assembling the vices in this country. So you can still actually buy one of these and you can also buy parts for them. So I may buy the pedestal, the little foot that uh, it mounts on but the reason I bought this particular one is because it happened to also come with the set of pipe jaws these auxiliary jaws just fit in between the uh, main jaws here and these are often missing so that allows you to clamp round objects or pipe um, just something you don't always find with the vices so and it was a decent enough price that it was worth buying it just just to get these really for whatever reason, I don't come across a lot of back saws, so if I find one that's in, in anywhere close to halfway decent condition, uh, I usually will buy it if it's not too much. And uh, the nicer ones I'll keep for myself, and if they're uh, you know sort of duplicates of what I already have, I'll turn around and resell them and then put the money towards something else that I can use. But this is one that looked uh, worth buying. It Someone has stripped the handle of the finish, so I'll have to go ahead and refinish it. It's it's not marked distant, but it does have the keystone emblem on it, so maybe it's a distant, I don't know. I'll clean it up a little bit and see what I've got here. Um, the handle's reasonably tight. It's not terribly old, but it's still probably better than a lot of the stuff you'd find at the hardware store today, so it was worth getting, and I'll take a closer look at this one. Ordinarily, uh, I don't buy hand saws like this unless I find them just for, you know, dirt cheap or they're in really good condition. Um, you just see hand saws all over the place and most of them are rusty and beat up. So I usually um, pass them by. And this is one that I would have passed by just because it has so many issues with it. Uh, starting with the fact that somebody has spray painted it with silver paint, probably to cover up rust. I don't know why somebody would do that. but. Um, the handle, even though it's in good shape, I don't know, it doesn't look quite original to the blade. Maybe it is, I don't know. Um, it's missing one of the nuts. This one's a replacement. These three maybe are original, I, I don't know. But like I said, I would have passed by this one, but as I was looking at it, uh, the light caught it just right, and I noticed that there is a stamp in here that says Henry Diston. And it's actually stamped into the blade, not etched in like later saws. So. The fact that it's stamped is an indication, from what I understand, that this is a fairly old saw, uh, possibly made in the 1850s or 1860s, at least the blade of it is. So uh, it was only a few bucks, so I decided I would buy it. I'll do a little bit of research on it and see what I have, clean it up a bit, and then decide uh, what, where to go from there. I could probably find some nuts to replace there and uh, keep that handle. Uh, it does have the original little nib on the top of the spine here, so that's another indication that it's an older saw. Uh, it's a rip saw. It's stamped five and a half points. So, like I said, I'll, I'll clean it up, do a little research on it, and then go from there. This was an interesting find. These two binders have uh, the name Deltagram on them. 
The Delta Gram was a magazine put out by the Delta Tool Company and it basically contained project plans, furniture plans, things that you could make with your Delta woodworking tools. Um, inside this one though is a set of basically instruction manuals on different things you can do with all your Delta power tools. And there's one for just about every kind of tool that Delta made. Abrasive tools, circular saw and jointer, lathe, bandsaw and scroll saw, drill press, and shaper. So these are just packed with useful ideas and uh, techniques, things that you can do with different power tools. There, some of the information is a little bit dated as far as safety goes and um, just you know techniques that you probably might not want to do today but it's still interesting to thumb through and read and uh, there is a lot of useful information in here still too so uh, definitely worth having if you come across these uh, you can often find them just for a couple of bucks so it was nice to get the whole set and they're all in really nice shape too look like new practically this one is uh, I don't know seven or eight different project idea books and again these are more plans or furniture ideas things to build um, usually just has a sketch and a, a photo so not super detailed but enough to get you going um, again you know these are put out in the 40s so the information's a little bit dated the designs are anyways some of the stuff you might still be interested in making but it's still just again fun to thumb through and read just to see what kinds of things people used to build back in the day. Next up, I found a pair of draw knives. And uh, again, I usually pass these by unless they're in good condition. And by good condition, I mean no missing or broken handles. The handles need to be on there tight. Um, and then, you know, I look for ones that have a decent amount of blade life left in them. Sometimes they'll be ground down so many times that the width of the blade is you know real narrow so these both still are in pretty good shape even though they're a little bit rusty uh, this one is a bluegrass which I believe was the house brand of Belknap hardware company out of Louisville Kentucky and this one was one that I had I had not heard of before um, it's marked JSH and company crown so I had to do a little hunting on the internet and that JSNH stands for Janney Semple and Hill Company. And this was a hardware company out of Minneapolis. So not too far away from, from where I am here in Iowa. So kind of an interesting find. This is a nine inch and an eight inch. And uh, these are a nice enough shape that I will probably end up uh, cleaning these up and, and hanging on to them. All right, I'm saving the best for last. Um, this is a number four hand plane probably one of the most common sizes, but this one's a little bit special. Um, this is a Keen Cutter, K-E-E-N, Keen. And Keen Cutter was the house brand of the Simmons Hardware Company out of St. Louis. And you'll find these Keen Cutter planes, uh, they're not rare, so you'll come across them every once in a while, but what you wanna look for is the casting in the base. It'll be, there'll be a casting number and this is a K4. You'll see some that have two Ks. It'll be KK4 or KK5. Those ones with the two Ks were made by the Ohio Tool Company, and they're not nearly as desirable. But if they just have one K, like this one, this is K4. These were actually made by Stanley, and they are actually the same planes as the Stanley Bedrocks, the early round-sided Stanley Bedrocks. So the Bedrocks were Stanley's premium line of planes. They had a machined surface uh, on the, on the uh, base of the plane and the frog where the two meet. So down back in here. And that just made it for a real uh, good connection between the frog and the base to help eliminate chatter. Um, I don't know, some people say it was just marketing hype, but regardless, the bedrock planes are well regarded. That's the design that Lee Nielsen um, used when they started designing their planes. So to find an original bedrock, you usually pay quite a bit more, but if you know what you're looking for, you can find these keen cutters sometimes, and people don't realize that they're 
same as a bedrock so they're price lower so this one is in pretty good shape it's you know got some surface rust on it but the knob and the tote are are both intact there's a little sliver out of the tote here but nothing nothing major um, this has a corrugated sole which yeah, I'm kind of go can go either way on that I'm not a big proponent one way or the other but um, has the original keen cutter blade with the keen cutter logo in it and the the uh, blade is actually uh, fairly good length still so it hasn't been used a whole lot so this is one that I definitely will keep I'll clean it up and keep it um, I have a Stanley Bailey number four so this will probably end up replacing the the Bailey that I have and I do have another keen cutter a number three that I found years ago so it'll be kind of nice to have a, uh, a pair of these anyways that's that was my uh, finds for the weekend um, I, I don't show these to, to show off or gloat or anything but I like I said I just enjoy seeing what other people find and I hope that you enjoy seeing this as well if this is something you like uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll try to do more of these as I come across other other finds that I find interesting so thank you for watching <laughs>